Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss first a little bit on the uh, thing that we have been discussing in the previous class. In the previous class, we looked at the formation of graphene using uh, chemical vapor deposition. So, I will just uh, give you a few more information about the graphene formation itself and a few important parameters to, to keep it in mind. So, we will try to understand that same a little bit further. And then we will come back to the Moray pattern at solid liquid, uh, solid solid interface. So you have already seen when we looked into the high resolution images of um, um, a graphene that is formed on platinum 111 surface, we have seen that there are also formation of super lattices and uh, that is typically known as Moray pattern. And we will also uh, have a look at that and then we will try to understand a few important aspects about the Moray pattern itself because that is something you will always uh, come across at interfaces. Yeah? So, just uh, that is also a good indicator for understanding a few important things at the interface. So, we will have a look at that uh, in greater detail. All right. So, just before we, we start, let me uh, um, recollect what we did uh, in the previous class. So, we did basically the formation of graphene and we were discussing basically about this uh, chemical vapor deposition itself. And then in this particular case, I said that you take actually ethylene as the precursor and then uh, depositing them on a hot surface about 1000 Kelvin, uh, you can basically just form the graphene itself. So that was basically the recipe of formation. But what I want to discuss is basically that if you look into the into the chemistry of how do you basically break this ethylene and then form graphene, there is an important question that you would ask, how do you really dissociate the, the hydrogen atoms and then you basically form the hydrogen molecules and then how do you really do this? We can try to understand it using a bit of the energy understanding to clearly understand what is going on. Uh, and then you also remember that we looked at this uh, scanning tunneling micrograph image uh, and then we have seen that we can form nice well ordered areas uh, or islands of um, graphene and what you are seeing here this nice hexagonal patterns and nothing but a super lattice. We will come back to that when we discuss the Moray pattern. But now let us just have a look at um, how do we really break this bond and how do we really do the chemistry. So, although the temperature is there. So, like if you look at, you can basically say that this is actually like a temperature induced breaking of CH bond. But the point is, we have already just uh, given a hint in the previous class. If I would look at the potential energy diagram of the dissociation of CH bond, so you can basically plot here the potential energy and along this axis you can basically plot the CH distance. Uh, in any unit that is no matter. So, it is like a qualitative diagram, but what is very interesting to note here is actually that in this potential energy diagram, if you look at the magnitude of the energy required to break a CH bond, this is actually in the order of about 4.5 electron volt or in the order of about 100 kilocalories per mole in the order. So, this is uh, quite a lot of amount of energy and if you compare it just with 1000 Kelvin, if you would convert the 1000 Kelvin into, into the form of energy, it would be basically in the order of only a few hundreds of milli electron volt. Yeah? So, that is still way, way below the real magnitude or the energy required to break the, the bond itself. So, now we have actually to do the chemistry. So, we have basically the acetylene, uh, sorry, the uh, um, we have basically the um, ethylene molecule. So, you have this uh, type of um, geometry if you look uh, into consideration. So, this is basically the molecule itself and what we want to do is actually what we want to do is basically to break this, um, we want to break basically these bonds. This is what we want to do, right. So, now, the point is like you can see the amount of energy that is involved in breaking the four uh, CH bonds in this molecule in order to form basically the 
um, uh, the, the graphene itself. You have to break four bonds. So that means the amount of energy that you require per molecule is about um, 18 electron volt or so. So that's a huge amount of energy. So that's not good. So then how does this happens on the surface? Well, we can complete uh, uh, the, the equation. So you go like that and you can basically get a C double bond C here, another C double bond C here and another C double bond C and then you see like by connecting them together you basically form a graphene um, uh, cell yeah and then you have many many different uh, cells that are actually going in in this direction and then you can basically complete the formation of graphene so that's what it is so what we want to do basically is breaking of the ch bond now the point is when you increase the temperature what happens is actually the ch bond is started to to vibrate yeah so that means you're by vibrationally exciting all the ch bonds of the molecule now if you look at the typical uh, ladders um, or the vibrational ladders that are present within this electronic state of the molecule that is basically represented by this um, kind of MOS potential. So this is basically representing the state of the molecule, yeah? state of CH bond for example and uh, so this represent basically the CH vibration. So these are actually the CH vibrations. Now you can see that the energy required to basically just excite CH bonds, so the vibrational energy required to excite the CH vibrations are way, way below than actually the actual um, uh, dissociation energy. So if you would basically climb up this ladder like this, that means something called as vibrational assisted. So most of the chemical reactions are indeed happening like that along a given coordinate this is the coordinate along which here for example the chemistry happens the CH distance and along that coordinate you have to basically find out a certain vibrational excitations that would basically help the chemical reaction. So ideally by climbing up this ladder in small steps you can in fact reach somewhere at the dissociation point and then the bonds are basically breaking. So like that you create a lot of um, you break all the CH bonds and then finally you can kind of make the uh, graphene. Now it is also very important that we do this chemistry on surface if you do not do it on surface there is a high chance that you can also make actually like uh, different allotropes of carbon or you can even make uh, amorphous carbon and so on. So therefore it is extremely important that you do this chemistry on a crystalline surface because the crystalline surface actually help the uh, C double bond C to actually just have a kind of template and that template would actually just hold the geometry itself. As you see here it is quite important that the C double bond C bonds are actually present on the surface in a planar manner. Then they would basically do the chemistry nicely and then you can finally form the graphene. So this is how most of the, the chemistry uh, or the chemical reactions that you can actually induce on surface uh, and in this particular case for us it is relevant because we can uh, here make actually graphene and that is actually a very well known two dimensional material. Now we want to understand a little bit in detail so you remember then when you look into the graphene itself you do see that there are actually the super lattice formation. So the super lattice formation is something that we have actually called as a moray pattern. So we'll try to understand that moray pattern. So this is actually a true effect that happens at the very interface of different materials. It is not necessary that you would find actually in thicker films of material because this is actually a true influence of the interface or the so-called uh, interaction between the adsorbate layer and the very surface layer. Yeah, so therefore, it is a, 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 an important thing that you would observe at the interface. Now, let us look at moray pattern. So, what is a moray pattern? So, moray pattern is not necessary that has to do always uh, with the with uh, lattices. It is also something that whenever you have two periodic lattices that are actually crossing with respect to each other. And depending on their orientation and also depending on the spacing between the two different lattices, you can actually get super patterns. So this is actually an, 
an illusion that you get because of the fact that the two super lattices or two lattices are actually just rotating with respect to each other or when the two lattices having different spacing for example. I will just show you an example. Here I have a lattice, uh, a single linear lattice so I have just lines and what I am going to now do is I am actually going to put exactly the same top type of lattice on top of it and then I am going to rotate them with respect to each other. And you can look carefully what happens that actually forms some kind of a super periodic pattern inside and that is um, just due to the fact that these two actually just rotating with respect to each other. Now let us look at it. So this is what is happening. So now if you look very carefully depending on the angle you can see that there is actually a pattern that is actually observed within this um, two lattices. So this is exactly uh, what is known as Moray pattern. So just due to the fact that two lattices are actually interacting. Um, now let us look a little bit in detail what happens. So these are actually like the snapshot of the same what you have seen in the previous animation where I have actually just uh, uh, took a snapshot of the rotation of the two lattices at different angle of rotations. Now you see clearly that if the angle of rotation is very large then the super periodicity that I see. So you can now see that the two dashed lines are representing a kind of super lattice. You see I can see a super lattice that is actually forming between, between the two, two different lattices. And the spacing between the super lattices are actually much larger and if you now increase the angles you can see the super lattice is basically just getting smaller and smaller. And if I would make actually the angle much larger, then you see that the super lattice is basically getting smaller and smaller. So that means there is a clear relation between the angle of rotation between the two lattice and also between the super lattice periodicity. So this D would be the periodicity of the super lattice. So that also means if you would eventually have the Moray pattern and if you know the super lattice, you would even come up with the angle of rotation between the lattice and you need to also know the distance between the lattices of the original uh, lattice that you are actually using for it. So you can actually now make it more quantitative. Now let us look at uh, a few more examples. So here for example is the same type of lattice where what I have done is I have taken one lattice and the other lattice that I am going to put on top of each other, I am keeping it actually at the same orientation but I have actually just made the lattice to be a little bit larger compared to the original one. You can see D is the original lattice and the new lattice that I am putting on top of the other is actually having a slightly larger lattice parameters between the adjacent lines. Now something interesting happens, you can see that in the beginning the two lattices are actually coinciding with respect to each other but then after a long time about 2D distance you can see that again they are actually merging and after a long distance again they are merging. But in between the lattices are not matching with respect to each other. So you can also now see that in this image you also create some kind of a super periodic pattern with um, 2D being actually the lattice uh, parameters of the super lattice. You can also now calculate basically the 2D if you know the D square and also if you know the delta D. So what mo most of the time you will actually find that when we apply that inside uh, uh, our case which is actually the interface case, what you want to actually calculate is this delta D and 2D and D are actually something known to you and you can basically calculate the change in the lattice parameters because this is something going to really happen. I will show you an example now quickly. You see this example is something we have actually looked at uh, in the previous case. Here I have an FCC 100 surface and on top of that the blue atoms are actually kind of an odd layer with a slightly different lattice parameter than the surface. Yeah? So this is basically the surface and the blue is basically the odd layer. Now you see that there is actually the, some kind of a coincidence of this lattice and this lattice point which means that is kind of a super periodicity. So this is something that we have already discussed in the class and when it comes to our case that means the solid, uh, solid interface these kind of uh, super lattices are actually very good that is something you can experimentally observe and if you know the, the super lattice parameters then you can ideally calculate the change in, 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 in the lattice parameters between 
the um, the surface lattice and the add layer lattice. So, that is why it is actually interesting for us. Now, let me also show you a few examples just to see how uh, important it is. So, here it is not necessary that the lattices need to be always like lines or grids or whatever, it can also be something else. Like look at this, this is actually some kind of a circular uh, pattern and I am going to basically just move or stretch the circular pattern on top of another circular pattern and you can see what actually happens. Now you see as I stretch the other circular pattern over the other, you can see basically there is a pattern that is emerging um, in within that. Yeah, So, there is a nice pattern that is basically emerging. So, we can have a look at it one more time you can see that a pattern is basically forming. So, you can create this or we can actually look at a few different ways that you can create moray pattern uh, is by basically just shifting different type of circular patterns across each other uh, and you can actually just move them like this and then you would always whenever they go around so they would create basically some sort of an uh, some sort of a pattern uh, with respect to each other. So, that is typically what is known as moray pattern. Now, not only here, moray pattern also is something that you would see it in your daily life. For example, you see this kind of pattern in, in the feather of uh, birds or even in a polyester shirt of you, you can also see sometimes there is actually some, some kind of a special pattern that appear or for example, here you can see some kind of a pattern that is emerging between two nets um, that is actually just kept um, between uh, two different places. Yeah. So, always when two different kind of lattices are actually kind of merging or, or just overlaying with respect to each other, you would actually find this kind of pattern. So, the, so, you should not be actually just confused with an interference pattern, this has nothing to do with interference, this is basically a true optical effect due to the fact that or, or, or visual effect due to the fact that you basically have two different kind of lattices that are actually just um, overlaying with respect to each other and that gives rise to uh, something like the, the presentation of a, a kind of a new pattern that would emerge. So, you can see here there are uh, kind of strange wiggly patterns, it all depends on the type of, of grid that you use because you know that cloth has actually like a, a kind of square pattern inside because you have like uh, lines that are going like this, uh, uh, threads that are going like that and that makes a pattern for example. Yeah. So, this is what a moray pattern is and now how are we going to make use of it and that is also something you will see in this example and also in a few other examples that I am going to show uh, in the next lectures. So, this is basically the graphene that we have already uh, seen in the previous class uh, uh, deposited on platinum 111 surface. Yeah. So, I told you already that these spots are nothing but just graphite atoms or so graphene atoms. And you can see this graphene atoms would make a nice hexagon. Yeah, that is a proof that it is basically a graphene atom. Right? But now the thing is, what is this lattice that you are seeing, which also looks like a hexagonal lattice? What is that? That is actually due to the fact that you have a 111 surface which has again a hexagonal lattice, and now the graphene is also some kind of a hexagonal lattice. So, you now take the two different lattices, put one on top of the other and then you are actually just going to end up in a super periodic pattern and that is exactly what you are observing it. So, now we can look a little bit inside at the atomic level in a, in a model and then we can try to understand what is really going on. Now, what you are seeing here is actually a model where all the circular, you please follow this drawing very carefully, all the circular thing are nothing but the platinum surface. This is the platinum 111 surface, the platinum atoms and you can see here everywhere some kind of a hexagonal mesh that is also put on top of the platinum atom and that is nothing but the graphene layer. Now, most important thing that you note is one of the lattice direction that is actually the 1, 1 bar 0 lattice direction. We have already familiarized that in the previous class. One of the lattice direction is actually in registry with the lattice direction of the hexagon. That actually means in very simple sense the lattice of the platinum 
and graphene are kind of aligned with respect to each other that you can already see here. If I would just make this sketch further, you would see that the hexagons are actually going in this direction and also you can see the platinum atoms are also arranging in this direction. So, that is very important. Now, what you see is somewhere at this part, you can see there is the platinum atom and the hexagon is basically merging with respect to each other. You can of course go now about 8 platinum atom along this direction, 8 platinum atom along this direction. Now, you can meet again another hexagon that is exactly on top of a platinum atom. That means only along this direction, only every 8th platinum atom and every 8th hexagon of the um, um, graphene is actually uh, in on top of each other. Now, you see the problem is at many different locations, therefore you can see that at this location here that two hexagon of the graphene is basically just staying on top of a platinum uh, atom. I can actually just highlight it by the red color you can see here. This is actually the platinum atom and now you can see two hexagon of the graphene is actually on top of a, uh, a platinum atom. So, that means that point is going to be slightly higher in, in space and the other at where the platinum atom and the hexagon of the graphene is actually coinciding there it is going to be a little light, it, a little bit lower in topography. So, that means if you go along the platinum direction, you are going to get a small modulation in the topography. Yeah, That is actually due to the fact that the atoms along the different directions are having different adsorption site. Now, this makes it like that. So, you can actually now go along this direction 8 times and this direction along 8 times and this direction 8 times and this direction 8 times, you basically make an 8 by 8 super lattice. So, that means the uh, observed uh, super lattice, you can also now start counting basically how many carbon atoms are along this and then you would basically find out uh, that exactly and then now you can see that the super lattice or the Moray pattern that you observed for the graphene on platinum 111 surface is actually just due to the fact that uh, there is actually a super lattice formation. And this of course happened due to the fact that the graphene lattice and the platinum lattice are actually not matching. Yeah, The lattice constant of platinum and that of graphene are different. So, of course, now that means you have actually two hexagonal type of uh, lattices, but their lattice constant are different and therefore, they would basically just start to do this kind of a super lattice. Yeah, So, that is nice. You can actually look at a few more examples. So, here again graphene on iridium 111 surface, uh, let us again a kind of hexagonal surface. You can also see nicely the Moray pattern. So, this actually represent the hexagon of the graphene and now you can see that the, this is forming again a kind of nice super lattice that connects um, the graphene uh, lattice and they are actually just forming this kind of a super lattice. Good, then um, I just want to show you a particular example of kind of an influence of uh, lattice mismatching and that actually happens in this particular case where you take actually a cobalt deposition on copper 111. So, this particular example I am going to show you is basically to understand um, uh, the, the formation of Moray pattern and also uh, the influence of the lattice mismatching for example. So, here what you think is like the copper bulk lattice is about 2.55 angstrom, but that of the cobalt bulk is actually about 2.51 angstrom. So, now if you calculate something like a strain at the interface, which is actually given by the difference between the lattice uh, constants of the two um, participating elements divided by that of the surface, you would basically just get something known as strain. We will look also in greater detail later in some of the classes. So, you see the strain is about 1.5 percentage. Now, in this case, if you now deposit this um, cobalt uh, on copper, you see that you can nicely see the islands and there is no Moray pattern for example observed in it. But now what I want to show you is actually a case of cobalt deposited on silver. These are two independent examples. You can of course understand these examples in greater detail by reading these papers for example. 
And in that case, what you find interesting is that the lattice parameter, the bulk lattice uh, uh, unit cell of uh, silver is 2.89 and that of cobalt is actually 2.51. Now you see there is a huge difference between the lattice parameters of silver and cobalt. And then if you calculate the strain it is about 13 percentage. So this is a very very large percentage in the strain that actually causing the interface. So that means when you want to accommodate the cobalt atoms on silver, uh, silver surface, the atoms at the interface of cobalt will have to undergo a very large strain. But that in the case of cobalt on copper, it is relatively less. Now you see the interesting effect is basically that you can see a, a more pattern in this. So you are basically seeing again some kind of a super lattice in this case. Again hexagonal in shape. The reason is because the cobalt lattice and the silver lattice, they are both uh, hexagonal. Uh, sorry, silver, silver 111 surface has a six fold symmetry and cobalt is a hexagonal lattice and therefore you see eventually you see some kind of a hexagonal moray pattern. So this moray pattern basically will tell you a lot of interesting aspects so that we will see in the next class. But what I want to say is that as soon as you have this large mismatch between the uh, add, layer, so add layer and the surface you are going to observe basically this kind of um, uh, moray pattern and that is actually due to the fact that there is a huge mismatch between the lattice parameters. Well in the next class uh, I would show you uh, in, in greater detail that you can also just understand a few more important uh, parameters and details about the interface itself by uh, using the super lattice that you observe. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, um, this is a nice uh, good example in getting uh, an understanding of the influence of the lattice mismatch itself and the formation of more pattern. Yeah. In cobalt case, there is a small percentage so that, is, that means the cobalt atoms are relaxed at the interface and you do not see any more pattern. So that means each cobalt atom is actually sitting on top of each copper atom or uh, with respect to each cobalt atom there is uh, one uh, copper atom but in this case there is a super lattice formation. So that is the reason why you see this kind of moray pattern in this case. Good, um, thank you very much for your attention and I see you in the next class with the further details. Thank you.